Welcome back to our authority control class. Uh, this is week four. And last week we talked a bit about how to search an authority file in order to find the authority record for a particular access point you wanted to use in the record for something you're cataloging. Today we're going to talk about um, the authority records themselves, the structure, how do you figure out what exactly is the authorized access point, things like that. And we will get into MARC a little bit um, as far as determining what tags are used in an authority record. Um, really briefly, the main part of the authority record, the parts that we're going to look at, are the actual authorized access point, the access point that you are supposed to use for a particular subject or a particular person's name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this will be found in mark field 1xx in an authority record, so a 100 field if it's a person's name, a 150 field if it's a topical subject heading, a 110 field if it's a corporate name, things like that, and we will in the next video this week, um, go through and search for a few of these so you'll see examples of each of these things. The next part of an authority record is a use for reference. Um, these are access points or potential access points that mean the same thing as whatever the authorized one is. However, these are not used. Um, so basically it says instead of this, use whatever is in the 1xx field, whatever is the authorized access point. So these will be found in mark fields starting with 4, the 4xx fields. So if it's a, a variant form of a person's name, it'll be in a 400 field in an authority record. Um, if it's a variant form of a topical subject heading, it'll be in a 450 field in an authority record. You'll also see related terms. Um, these are not prohibited from use like the 4 XX fields are. Um, these are things that are either broader or narrower terms to whatever authorized access point you're looking at. Um, so you may want to consider using that if it fits your uh, topic more closely. Or um, there are related terms. Um, they're not necessarily broader or narrower, but they may be things you want to consider using either in addition to the current heading access point you're looking at, or instead of it, if it's really you figure out that that is closer to what you're actually trying to talk about. So let's look at a couple of examples of authority records here. Um, this is a topical subject heading, the word cake. And like I said, the actual authorized heading that you want to use always is in the mark field starting with 1, the 1xx field. In this case, because it is a topical heading, uh, cake is in a 150 field. Remember that when you're using it in your bibliographic record, you will still want to put it in a 650 field. It's in the 150 in the authority record and the 650 in the bibliographic record. You'll see here that we have a use for reference um, in the 450 field, the word cakes, which you know, could be used to basically mean the same thing. Um, because it's in a 450 field, this means this is not used. If you were tempted to use cakes for a subject heading, you should use cake instead in order to be consistent with anybody else who uses Library of Congress subject headings. There are a few 550 fields here. Um, you'll notice that baked products and confectionery have a subfield W with the code G in it. These means these are broader terms. There's another 550 field, and this one does not have a subfield W with that code G. So this just means that it's a related term. So it's not broader or narrower, but it's related. So if you were cataloging a book about cakes and you realize that it also includes things about pastries and you see this subject heading and you say, oh cool, maybe I'll use that too. Or if you were cataloging a book about pastries and you had looked up cakes because you weren't exactly sure what subject heading to use and you saw this related term pastry, that would redirect you and say, oh yeah, I want to use this one instead. So that's a topical um, subject heading, the authority record that you would find in the Library of Congress authority file. Here is an example of an authority record for a personal name. Um, in this case, Theodore Roosevelt is the name we're looking at, and here we see that his, the authorized access point includes his birth and death dates, and it's found in the 100 field, so that's how you know that that's the correct access point to use. Um, in the 400 fields, there are um, a shortened form of his name, Roosevelt, Teddy. There is um, an older version, um, anything that has the subfield W with the NNAA, that means that the heading used to be this and then they changed it to this. So in this case, you can see that they took out the uh, notation that he was the President of the United States at one time. 
Um, you'll also see his name in some other languages. Those are also examples of 400 things. All these things should not be used. Instead, whatever is in the 100 field should be used. So if you um, were thinking if you had a book that calls him Teddy Roosevelt, and you look that up in the authority file, you will find out that no, you don't use Roosevelt, comma, Teddy. You use Roosevelt, comma, Theodore. So that is a bit about how um, cross-references work in authority records for personal names.